Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a pen tester? Maybe you're just curious and want to understand what does a pen tester, an ethical hacker do, or even better, maybe you are willing to pursue a career as a pen tester and this is some sort of an interest to you. Well, if that's the case, then you're in luck. In this video, I want to kind of walk you through what does my day-to-day -day look like when I'm on a pen test? What are the things that I do? And is it fun? What parts do I enjoy? And what parts make me miserable and exhausted? And hopefully by the end of this video, you kind of get an idea of what does the day-to-day -day look like for somebody like me. A pen test is usually broken down into four different phases and the first one is usually the scope call or the preparation phase. This is where we sit down with our client. We talk about what is the scope of this pen test. Is it an internal pen test? Is it external? Is it a web app? What's all included in this pen test? And what are the rules of engagement? And also, what does this client value the most? Is it something that they want to investigate? Are they doing a pen test for a specific reason? For compliance reason, for example? Or what else that we need to know before we get started? This part is probably one of the easier parts because it's also a bit more fun, at least for me it is, because we get to talk to our clients, understand what is it that they want to accomplish, and we take notes and we go back to our team. And when I say the team is mostly me, and somebody else that actually helps with my pen test, but we go back and digest those notes and we send a proposal to our client and we tell them like, hey, this is how many hours it's gonna take us to do it and this is what we want to do and so on. Their preparation phase is kind of dependent on the client. It could be very different with each client. Sometimes it takes multiple calls because we wanna figure out and align and make sure the testing periods work out and things like that. So this step is, it's fun, but also it's a lot of work and it is very, very different depending on the client itself. The second phase, and I think this is probably the most fun and most, more entertaining phase of the pen test is the exploitation phase. This is where we know what we're hacking in, we know what we're supposed to do, and we start to look for vulnerabilities and we kick off our, what we call a testing period or exploitation period. A lot of times when you work with a pen test firm or a group of pen testers, almost nine out of 10 times or even 10 out of 10 times, they start with an automated testing period or they do it in parallel while we're also doing our manual testing. The approach to the automated testing is different, but usually they all use some sort of a vendor. And personally for myself, when I do a pen test, I use Astra who happens to also be our sponsor for this video. And if you're not familiar with Astra, they offer a number of different pen test types, including web application, mobile apps, cloud and API testing. Astra aims to build a one of a kind platform that helps organizations become proactively secure with continuous vulnerability scanning and pen tests. Not only they offer a manual scan using OWASP, SANS, and Quest standards for your SOC 2, HIPAA, or compliant pen tests, but they also have a continuous scanner that allows you to schedule and scan behind logins. And on top of it all, they also help you with vulnerability management, and they also have an AI-assisted engine that acts as a personal security assistant bot, and they also help you with generating test cases. Now, let me walk you through the both automation and manual approach to my pen test. Usually what you want to do is you want to kick off your automated scan. Again, I'm using Astra for this case. All you have to do is go here and create a new project. You can give it a website name or the application name, your client's name or the business name, and then you're going to give it a URL where the testing is going to happen. For this case, I'm going to do www.nahomsec.com and we're going to say it's a staging site. You want to make sure you give it the right data and then it's going to ask you to verify yourself. This is just to make sure you are actually authorized or you are the owner of the application that Astro is going to send requests to to pen test and find vulnerabilities. And I'm going to quickly skip this part and we're going to just quickly go to a fake project that I have created and instead look at the data from that i just don't want to leak some of my customers and their vulnerabilities and having a test project makes it a lot easier to talk through so now that we have a scan done this is what it looks like it's going to show you how many vulnerabilities it's found and then you can scroll down and kind of see a vulnerability severity with like a table that says hey these are the number of vulnerabilities that we have found that are unresolved some of them need help some have been solved and then you can scroll down and see more comments and more information. The cool thing that I do like about the vulnerabilities tab is that you can actually click on these vulnerabilities. Not only it shows you the criticality level, but just keep in mind some of these are from a older scan, but you can click on it and you can see the steps and where it was found. So for example, I'm gonna go back to another one for this SVN, for example. It's gonna tell you, hey, this is where the .svn file was found and this is how you reproduce it. And you can actually just copy this vulnerability and include it in your report, which we'll talk about in just a bit. So that's just the 
automated approach. The point of an automated approach is you have it just to a scan for you where it's just going to automatically look for some vulnerabilities and you can just prioritize your time on vulnerabilities and tasks that you know matters to your customer the most. So let me just give you an example of that. For example, I know Astro is going to do a lot of content discovery. It's going to look for things like .svn, .git, and things like that. So maybe I skip doing the content discovery or fuzzing part of the web app. Maybe I'll do it later if I have more time. And also know that Astro is going to do some cross site scripting testing, especially for reflected XSS, where it's just in the URL parameters. Just know that scanners will look for those things. So I'm going to deprioritize looking at that XSS by reflected XSS. I'm going to prioritize stored XSS more because I feel like there is more human element that is required in those. And I'm just going to test for those just in case one of us misses it. Either I miss it or Astra for some reason misses it. I want to make sure I give my clients full coverage. Besides that, I'm also going to look for some of the more logical things. Maybe if there is a sign up flow that is multiple steps, can I bypass it and things like that, that a scanner would probably not be able to do because it requires a little bit of human element in there. And we want to make sure that we give again, a full coverage to our clients. So that's kind of what it looks like when it comes into the manual approach. I do use a few tools. So for example, I'll use a proxy tool, whether it's Burp Suite or Kaido. I have that open on this side because you need that to be able to test all these web apps. But a lot of times I stay away from using any tooling because I rely on something like Astro. So keep that in mind. That's kind of what the exploitation phase looks like. You want to do both. You want to make sure we give full coverage to our clients. This next phase of a pen test is probably the least favorite part of any pen test for a lot of pen testers. And that's because you have to write the executive summary. And a lot of times people hate doing this because it is a lot of work, but don't worry, I'll show you a hack to kind of do this a little bit better and faster. But the moral of the story here is that you want to include both your findings from your automated testing and everything that you have found manually. So for example, if you're using something like Astro, you want to make sure you go to your vulnerabilities get the description and include how do they reproduce this vulnerability and what are some of the recommended remediation steps that they can take in order to fix this. So let's take a look at an example really quickly. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to our document really quickly here, throw the title of it. Sometimes I make adjustments to these. So maybe I could say the website title or the website URL here, but then we're going to go back and type in the details of the vulnerability. You want to make sure you have some sort of description for this vulnerability. And then we're going to just have the steps that are required for this exact reproduction steps. So for example, there's a URL here, we can just go in here and say reproduction steps, what we're going to say is go to this URL and see that you have all these backup files included. And you can also go back and include a suggested fix. So we can say remediation steps right here. And that step just says, Hey, if you want to fix this, you want to make sure you private access to this web server. And this is how you fix it. And of course, the last step in writing the reproduction step is kind of putting an impact. So if you're not sure of the impact and you need some extra help, you can actually use Astra's bot right here, the astronaut bot. You can ask it a bunch of different questions like, Hey, clarify this vulnerability. How do I fix this? Or how does that impact us? And it's going to take a moment. It's going to give you a resolution for it. And this is something you can do to leverage your AI bot that has a bit of context on the vulnerabilities that it has found. In most cases, you also have the option for a lot of these scanners to email yourself a report. So you can just go in here and say, hey, export this report for me and send it over via email. I'm just going to skip this part. This is very, very common for a lot of pen tests, but we kind of got that out of the way and we kind of know what are the vulnerabilities that you have found. But now it's time to work on our executive summary. Before I do that, though, I want to make sure you understand these are all examples that I'm using. There's a lot of more time and effort that goes into this. It may look easy or it may not look super accurate. I just want to make sure I show you what it looks like. So you kind of get an idea of how to do this and how I do it on my pen test. And maybe it will help you because you're a pen tester or you're pursuing a job in this field. So now let's switch gears and write our executive summary. And for this summary, I'm going to just take up some of these vulnerabilities that we have that Astra found for us. And I'm going to use Claude to write this. The only thing that I got to caution you with this is you want to make sure you're not including actual vulnerability details like URLs, how to exploit and what the payloads are. And you're just giving Claude some details on the vulnerability title and the criticality. So the first thing we want to do here is we're going to tell it, Hey, I want you to write an executive summary from this company, from this state to this state. And these are some of the stuff that I want to include in this summary. And then of course, we're going to give it a list of our findings and just let Claude do its thing. It's going to come back and give us a good overview of everything that we have found. It does some of the key findings. It does some patterns that it's found. Honestly, you can tweak this however you want. It just depends on your client, what they want and how you write your summaries. But honestly, using AI has been a very, very easy and just nicer way of finding vulnerabilities. What I do is I just feed it a list of my vulnerabilities and it just gives me the executive summary 
that you can actually use. So I can just copy this, go back in here and throw it on there. You can also go as far as asking for it to give you a recommendation on fixes and you can have it do an overview for you. But that's also what you have with Claude. It's just, I think with AI, it makes it a lot easier to write these different executive summaries. And that's something that I rely on when I do all of my pen tests for my clients. And of course, the very last step is to do remediation. A lot of times we promise our customers and our clients that, hey, if we do a pen test for you, once you fix them, we're gonna give enough time for you to fix them actually. And then once you have fixed them, we're gonna take a look at them and make sure that the fix have been applied. And if we find any bypasses or anything that has happened that maybe you haven't fixed, then we're gonna report it back to them as well. So that's kind of the, the very last step. You also wanna make sure they're supported and they know that they have to fix these things. And if they're fixed, you wanna validate those fixes for them. That's kind of what it looks like for a day-to-day it's just a lot of times these happen in the number of different days. So I'm not doing this in just one single day, but it takes us a couple of weeks to get it done. Typically two to four weeks is what we do, depending on how large a project is, but that's kind of what it looks like. And I think there's value to show people what does a pen test look like? What is a day-to-day -day like? And is this job for you? So let me know in the comments, do you like content like this? Are you going to be a pen tester? Are you a pen tester? Do you use any of these tools and things that I've mentioned in this video? One more thing before I let you go, if you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, become a homie and i'll see you all in next week's video peace